I'm going to read seven verses. I want you to pay particular attention to the first three. Because it's really important for us to understand the connection between what Carrie just read and what I'm about to read. John makes it pretty clear. So the first three verses are these. And one of the verses is the best known verse in all the Bible. This is the story you just heard from Carrie. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. And then the verse that everybody knows. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish but have eternal life. Do you see the connection? In the Old Testament, God's people were given life because of a snake on a pole. In the New Testament, God's people are given life because of a son on a cross. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed but those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Be Please be seated. Please join me for a word of prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Tom Long, who is the professor of preaching at Candler School of Theology here in Atlanta, tells a wonderful story about one of the Ivy League schools, I think it was Harvard, that put together a research project, and what they did is they studied some of the careers of some of their graduates, one of which was a medical doctor who was in practice for 50 years. And as the medical doctor started into retirement, his wife sent out emails and letters and phone calls to some of his patients asking if they would send some congratulatory notes and thoughts about how her husband had cared for them over these last 50 years. She was filled, flooded with emails about how this doctor had cared for them. And she gathered them all up and put them in a beautifully bound volume and put it on the coffee table. One day a representative from Harvard came to interview this doctor about his career and he saw this bound volume sitting there and he said, excuse me doctor, but your wife has told me about all of these letters and congratulatory comments. You must be very proud. The doctor says, I've never read any of them. And the researcher said, what, what, you, you've, you've never read any, why? And the doctor looked him squared in the face and said, because I'm scared to death of being loved. Scared to death of being loved. It sounds kind of ridiculous until you start to think about it. Because you know as well as I do that love, real love, is more than hormones and passions and candlelight dinners. Real love is about vulnerability and trust and commitment. 
You can't love, we can't love each other without being vulnerable. Without being able to trust who we are to somebody else, even in the darkest places of who we are and who we are not. You can't love without commitment. Carrie said it a couple of minutes ago about putting somebody else's needs above your own. You can't love without risk. About being human in all that that matters to somebody and allowing somebody to be human with you. Like that doctor, the world is filled with people who are scared to death of being loved. God is not one of them. Paul says in Philippians that God emptied himself, took on the form of a servant, and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. And our text for this morning says it in even more succinct ways. For God so loved the world. Vulnerability, trust, Commitment. God poured everything God had out for you. And if you were the only person in the world, God would do it again. I think the best image this world has ever seen of what love means is that cross. Because on it, God says that everything God has Every ounce of God's being, God says to you and to me, here, take it. I will take any pain. I will forgive any sin. I will die any death to have a relationship with you. Take another look at that cross. Because that's how much God so loves the world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the Lent, and we are getting closer to Easter, and the closer we get to Easter, the more important the question of love becomes. So I have to ask it again. Are you scared to death of being loved? With whom and at what level are you able to become vulnerable? Who do you trust your spouse, your neighbor, yourself, God, nobody? What are the priorities for your commitment in your own life? For God so loved the world that God gave God's Son. God gives us Himself. And of all the adjectives that you could use to describe God, and there are plenty of them, the best one is love. Now, there are people who define God by righteousness and power and vengeance and an eye for an eye and all of the rest of it. The Bible defines God as love. No matter where you go and no matter who you are in this world, the Christian church is defined by one image and one image alone. That cross. That's how much God loves the world. Now there's going to come a time for each and every one of us when our time in this world is coming to an end. And so I ask in ending this morning one simple question. As you ponder that time, how would you like to be remembered? What's the legacy that you want to leave behind? Ted and Gail and Carrie and Bernice and Chuck and Dolores and Thad. When I remember you, I remember... What? That you had a lot of money? That you made a lot of friends? That you had a wonderful career? 
How do you want to be, what? How do you want to be remembered? As you ponder that, maybe it'll help to know that God had God's choice about how God wanted to be remembered. And God wants to be remembered this way. God so loved, so loved the world.